In this video, I'm going to update my top 10 players that are most likely to get into the Hall of Fame through the writer's ballot. Stick with me and I'll show you on my list. What is going on everybody? Thanks for joining me on my channel Brutus on Baseball. It is Hall of Fame season again and that means that it's time to revisit my top 10 list for players most likely to get into the Hall of Fame from each of the eras. In this video I'm talking all about the players that are eligible through the writer's ballot that are either currently on the ballot or will be coming onto the ballot in the next few years. I made a top 10 video last year and decided to update it again this year because first of all Scott Rowland got in but not only was he inducted in the Hall of Fame last year as I predicted, there were also a number of interesting vote totals for other players that made me want to adjust this list a little bit. Let's start by looking at last year's ballot, where we see that I predicted that Scott Rowland would get in in 2023. That means that there's got to be a new number one person on the ballot for this updated video. And not only that, but there were some interesting vote totals from last year that made me rethink some of the positioning of the players that are on this list. So not only are we going to see a new number one, but we're going to see some jockeying of positions for the rest of the guys as well. The way that I've ordered this top 10 list is not by the most deserving, but in order of who I think will be the next to get inducted. That means that somebody who may be a first ballot Hall of Famer but aren't eligible until 2025 isn't going to rank number one on this list. So let's jump right in with the number one guy on my list this year. The obvious choice, Adrian Beltre. Adrian Beltre is first eligible this voting cycle for the 2024 induction. And my prediction is pretty easy. I am 100% certain he will get in this year in 2024. The reason being, well, he's got 52.5 WAA, 93.5 war, which is outstanding for a career. He got 3,000 hits. He was a four-time All-Star, which is actually really low and shows you that not all Hall of Fame players get recognized as All-Stars throughout their career. But he was also voted in the top five of the MVP voting two different times. Five-time Gold Glove winner, two-time Platinum Glove winner, and four-time Silver Slugger winner. He had a really interesting career, not getting a lot of accolades throughout the course of his career, but accumulating a lot of traditional stats and analytics that show that he had an amazing full length of his career. And one of the reasons is because he got a really young start and played for a really long time. Two things that help any player to get inducted into the Hall of Fame. The number two guy on my list is Todd Helton. He was first eligible in 2019, and my prediction is he is going to also get in in this 2024 balloting cycle. I'm about 95% certain of that because he got 72% of the vote last year. And anybody that gets that close is more likely than not to get inducted the following year. So chalk me up for a second prediction of a player getting in in this 2024 Hall of Fame season. And in my mind, he's worthy. 33 WAA, 62 WAR. He was a five-time All-Star, one time he was in the top five of the MVP voting, three gold gloves, four silver sluggers, and most importantly, an incredible career slash line of 316, 414, and 539. Good for an OPS plus of 133 over the course of his career. And he played at a time when offensive production was at its height in the late 90s and early 2000s. The number three guy on this list is likely to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, and that's Ichiro Suzuki. He's first eligible in the 2025 voting cycle, and I think he'll get in that year again with 100% certainty. His WAA of 24.5 and, and his WAR of 60 are a little bit on the low side, but you have to realize he only started the age of 27 in Major League Baseball, and he had a long career where he was one of the best players in Japan for seven seasons before that. He's a 10-time All-Star, Rookie of the Year in 2001, the same year he won the MVP award as a rookie. He's a 10-time Gold Glove winner, three-time Silver Slugger, and he reached 3,089 hits. But again, that's Major League Baseball only. If you count Japan, it's 4,367 and would be number one all-time ahead of Pete Rose. The number four guy on my list is somebody who actually moved up six spaces from my last year's prediction, and that is Billy Wagner. I was originally a little bit bearish on Wagner getting inducted in the Hall of Fame by the writer's ballot. I thought he was more likely to be a Veterans Committee selection. But his vote total in 2023 was just over 68%, showing that he is creeping incredibly close to also getting the 75% needed for induction. And he's got two years of voting left to reach that. I don't think he's going to get in in 2024 because Beltre and Helton will be the ones that are inducted. 
but I think he's going to inch even closer and probably get over 70% in this year's cycle. And because of that, I think that he is incredibly likely to get in in 2025, his last year on the ballot. And I'm going to peg that certainty around 85% or so. There's always going to be some voters who don't like to vote in relief pitchers, but I think it's going to be overwhelming how dominant this guy was during his playing career. His WAA of 16.5 and, and his WAR of 28 are both really low, but that's because he's a relief pitcher, and they're actually pretty good numbers when you put them in the context of relief pitchers only. But they're also a little bit low because he didn't even pitch a thousand innings in his career, and he would be the first pitcher in the Hall of Fame with fewer than a thousand innings to ever get elected. But when he did pitch, he was absolutely dominant. Seven-time All-Star as a reliever. 1999 National League Rolaids relief for the best relief pitcher in the game. He finished in the top five of the Cy Young Award voting, and incredibly, he was the hardest thrower in his time in the game of baseball. For example, in 2002, he threw 159 individual pitches over 100 miles per hour, which isn't much in today's game, but when you put it in the context of 2002, the next highest pitcher was Bartolo Colon with 12 pitches over 100 miles an hour. So he was far and away the fastest pitcher in baseball in his generation. And that showed with having the highest strikeout to nine inning ratio in the history of baseball at 11.9 per nine innings pitched. The number five guy on my list is CC Sabathia. Sabathia's first opportunity in the writer's ballot is actually in 2025. But my prediction here is that he's likely to just miss induction in that first ballot. But I don't think he's going to have to wait, likely getting inducted in 2026, only his second year on the ballot. And I'm about 95% certain of that. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a first ballot selection, but if he is, he's likely to just squeeze in. His WAA of 28 and his war of 62 are good, if not a little bit borderline. But I think what gets him in are his accolades. 251 wins, which you're not going to see a whole lot of 250 win pitchers anymore in the game. He's got over 3,000 strikeouts, six-time All-Star. He was a Cy Young Award winner, and four times more, he finished in the top five of the Cy Young Award voting. And he was a World Series champion as well. For those reasons, I think it's really obvious that he'll get in quick. The number six guy on my list is Joe Maurer of the Minnesota Twins. Maurer is going to be first eligible in 2024, but I'm also predicting that he won't get in in his first couple tries, likely to also get in in 2026. And there's a reason why there's several guys that I'm picking here to get in in 2026. It's because there's very few newcomers to the ballot in that year that are worthy. The two most notable being Cole Hamels and Ryan Braun, who has no chance of getting into the Hall of Fame. And so I think 2026 is going to be kind of a makeup year for the writers, being able to vote in Sabathia and Maurer now. And I peg Maurer's chances around 85%. His WAA and more numbers are pretty low for a Hall of Famer at 27 and a half and 55. But I think a lot of that is because he played the catcher position for so long. And then later on in his career, he switched to first base after concussions became a problem. And at first base, he just doesn't accumulate as much value as other positions. On top of that, I just don't think that we really know how to value catchers over the course of their career and figure out how much value they actually provide. For Maurer, the fact that he played catcher and has the accolades that he does, I think make him more than worthy of the Hall of Fame, where he was a six-time All-Star. He won three batting titles from the catching position, which had never been done before. He was an MVP. He was a top five MVP vote getter another year, three time gold glove winner and a five time silver slugger winner. I think he's going to have to wait a couple seasons, but I'm also pretty confident he will get in around 2026. And because 2026 is such a weak year for newcomers to the ballot, I think there's going to be another inductee in that season and my number seven player, Andrew Jones. Andrew Jones was first eligible in 2018, and I think it's going to take until 2026 to actually get him into the Hall of Fame, which will be his ninth year on the ballot. Andrew Jones has had an incredible trajectory with the Hall of Fame voting, starting out at 7.3% in 2018, his first year, and moving up to 19% in 2020, 34% in 2021, 41.5% in 2022, and 58% in 2023. He still has 17% of the vote to make up, but this prediction gives him three years to do that, and I think he'll be able to because of how limited that 2026 ballot is going to be. I put his odds about 75%. 
and being at 58% of the vote already this year, if he's gonna make it, I think he's gonna be able to do it by 2026. His WAA of 36 and his war of 63 are both fairly deserving. The issue with Andrew Johns is that his career completely fell off after the age of 30. So he accumulated most of his traditional and analytic stats before the age of 30. And when a player falls off that quickly, it makes it so much harder for them to get inducted into the Hall of Fame. But Andrew Jones had an incredibly high peak, both on the offensive side, but especially on the defensive side of the ball. He was a five-time All-Star. He was in the top five MVP voting one year, but he was a 10-time Gold Glove winner and is often seen as one of the best defensive center fielders in the history of baseball. But on the top of that, he has a Silver Slugger Award winner as well and finished his career with 434 home runs. So certainly no slouch at the plate either. The number eight guy on my list is Buster Posey. Buster Posey is first eligible in 2027. And unlike Joe Maurer, who has an incredibly similar career, I don't think Buster Posey is gonna have to wait at all just because of the narrative surrounding him. I'm about 95% certain he'll get elected in his first year on the ballot in 2027. His WA of 27 and his war of 45 are incredibly low for the Hall of Fame and lower than Joe Maurer's numbers as well. But in addition to the mystery that is the catching position, there's another reason why his numbers are so low. And that's because he decided to retire early at the age of only 34. Whereas Maurer switched to first base and drug out his career a couple more seasons. But what really separates them is the story around Posey. He was a seven-time All-Star, Rookie of the Year in 2010, he was an MVP award winner just like Joe Maurer, a Gold Glove winner, five times he was the Silver Slugger. But what really separates Posey is that he was a three-time World Series champion and leader of the San Francisco Giants. It's something that voters really value when they look back at a player's career and decide whether they're worthy of the Hall of Fame or not. And for that reason, almost singularly, I think that Posey will get in on the first try in 2027. The number nine player on my list is outfielder Carlos Beltran. Beltran was first eligible this past season in 2023, where he did get 46.5% of the vote, which is a really decent number for predicting that he'll likely get in in the next few years. But his chances were hurt and will continue to be hurt by being known as one of the ringleaders for the 2017 Houston Astros cheating scandal. He was hired by the New York Mets in the offseason, but fired because of this cheating scandal before he was able to manage a single game for that team. And since then, he hasn't been able to get a managing job in Major League Baseball. But I don't think that's going to hold him back in the long run. It's likely to take him a few more years to creep that percentage of votes up toward 75%. But I think he's also likely to do it in 2027. Because outside of Posey, 2026 and 2027 don't have a lot of great players on either ballot. But I still think his chances are about 50-50. And who knows what Beltran's story is going to be too. Once again, he's likely to get toward 75% and should get over the hump. But it could be that there is just a certain block of voters that refuse to vote for him. And for that, his certainty is a little bit less. His WAA of 34 and a half and his war of 70 both clear the mark for me for Hall of Fame quality. In his accolades, he was a nine-time All-Star, Rookie of the Year in 1999. He was in the top five of the MVP voting once, three-time Gold Glover, two-time Silver Slugger, World Series champion, and 312 stolen bases on top of all of that that he did on offense and defense. So his career is more than worthy in my mind. It's just how voters are gonna see him through that cheating scandal. And the last guy that I'm putting on my list is a guy that I actually don't think is gonna get in through the writer's ballot, but it's gonna be interesting to see how it unfolds. And that is Gary Sheffield. Sheffield was first eligible on the ballot in 2015. So this last season in 2023 was his ninth attempt at the ballot. He started out at 11.7% in that first season that he was eligible and didn't really gain traction, hovering between 11.1% and 13.6% in his first five years of eligibility. Those first five years for him were also a time when the ballot was incredibly overcrowded with candidates for the Hall of Fame. And so his 11 to 13 percent of the vote was probably not reflective of his candidacy, but more voters not being able to find space for him in the top 10 players on their ballot. And in addition to that, Sheffield also has some links to PED usage. And as a result of the ballot becoming less crowded and voters being able to find more room for him on their ballot, his vote totals increased in 2020 to 30 percent, 2021 to 40 percent, and 2023 all the way up to 55%. Uh, Sheffield only has one more year of eligibility on the ballot. 
So this voting cycle coming up will be his 10th and final try at getting in through the writer's ballot. And he's got 20% of the vote to make up in this one season. I just don't think he's gonna be able to do it. I'd say he has about 50% chance of making it one of these days through the Hall of Fame committee. But again, a lot of that is gonna have to do with the way his peers view his career and whether they treat him the same way that they treated Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens in the contemporary ballot last year in 2023. His WAA of 26 and his war of 60 and a half are borderline, but for me, put him right over the top. I think those numbers are hurt quite a bit by his defensive value, which is a little bit less certain than his offensive value. His accolades though, he was a nine-time All-Star, three times he was in the top five of the MVP voting, five-time Silver Slugger, he was a World Series champion, he hit 509 home runs and a 140 OPS plus, one of the most feared hitters in his generation and perhaps the history of the game. So that's my top 10. And to finish out the list, I've got a couple honorable mentions like I do in most videos. The first two are actually guys that I think are easily going to be in. And I could have put one of these guys in instead of Gary Sheffield, but I wasn't extending this top 10 to consider the ballot all the way out in 2028. And those honorable mentions our teammates Albert Pujols and Yadier Molina, both eligible for the first time in 2028. And my prediction, both likely to get in in 2028 as well. I'm 100% certain with Pujols, no doubt about it, inner circle Hall of Famer. I'm about 75% certain with Yadier Molina. There seems to be a lot of voters that are behind him and a lot of narrative for him. I actually don't think I would vote for him personally, at least on the first ballot, but he has such a reputation, especially as a team leader and on the defensive side of the ball, that I think enough voters will put him in on the first ballot. Pujols, I don't think we even need to talk about. His WA and war numbers are incredible. Lots of accolades, three-time MVP, seven more times in the top five of the MVP. Molina, on the other hand, WAA of 15 and a half and a war of 42 are not quite good enough for me. This guy played until he was in his 40s and still didn't accumulate enough WAA or war to be better than Posey or Maurer. So it really, it comes down to his reputation as the best defensive player for a really good Cardinals team for a long time. And it's really hard to argue with that. Nine gold gloves and four platinum gloves. So it goes to show you how important his defensive reputation was. And on top of that, he does have 2,168 hits, which will be very meaningful for guys trying to make his case for the Hall of Fame. And the last honorable mention is a guy that I think is gonna have a really hard path to get in the Hall of Fame, but I think probably deserves more love than he gets. And that is Chase Utley. Chase Utley will first be eligible in this cycle in 2024. And it'll be really interesting to see how he does his first time out. I don't think he's gonna get anywhere near the vote totals that he needs in the first year or even on the writer's ballot through 10 years. And because of that, I think his best chances of making the Hall of Fame are likely gonna be through a veterans committee way in the future. His WAA of 41 and his war of 64 and a half show that he provided an incredibly high amount of value during a somewhat shortened career. He was a six-time All-Star, four-time Silver Slugger, and a World Series champion. Great player, but like Bobby Abreu currently on the ballot, he's gonna have an incredibly long road to climb his way into consideration. So there you have it. My top 10 players over the next couple years that are most likely to get into the Hall of Fame through the writer's ballot, plus a couple of honorable mentions. Thanks again for joining me. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with anybody who loves baseball on the Hall of Fame as much as you and I do. In the meantime, keep talking baseball, enjoy the off season, and we'll see you around.